a stay on matters of election coming up next year on Ghana tonight on your election command center. Some 17 days, election day, December 7, on constituency watch tonight. We focus on the Efutu constituency in the central region. It's a swing region and the Efutu constituency is a place to watch for a number of reasons. It is the constituency of Alexander Afenyo Marking, majority leader in this eighth parliament with all everything that's happened. And then also there's a development in that particular constituency um, as we, we, we're looking at going into the elections. Let's head to the central region. Earlier today, an independent parliamentary candidate in, in the Futu constituency leading up to this election, uh, Louisa Boabing, was arrested by the Winneba Divisional Police Command. The candidate was arrested immediately after court proceedings at the Winneba High Court. We have visuals of the court on the screen right now where she was seeking for an injunction on the December 7 parliamentary elections in the Efutu constituency. Uh, she is accusing the Electoral Commission of leaking her nomination documents to the public. That's what she went to court for. Then we, we got to know eventually that afterwards, the, the, the police stormed the area. That's what you see there. And for the benefit of those listening to us on the radio, uh, the, the armed police personnel stormed this court and with, with the intention to arrest this independent parliamentary candidate in the Afutu constituency, the constituency of Alexander Fenyo Markin, the majority leader. But let's, let's stay a bit further on this matter because this is one that has generated a lot of conversation, especially because of the dynamics of that constituency. Let's have a conversation right now. And, and uh, Jennifer Morris, a, a J, is lawyer for Madame Louisa Boabing, who is the independent candidate going into this 2024 December 7 parliamentary elections in the Futu constituency. He's joining us right now. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Now, uh, from what we do, we do know what we read. You went to court to seek an injunction on the December seven elections because your client, this this independent candidate, had accused the electoral commission of leaking her information to the public. How did the arrest come about? Yes, um, that is true. Um, the arrest actually came about after we had left the control. And there were a lot of armed police men on the premises of the courts waiting for my client. In fact, when we were inside, we never saw anything like that until we came out. Initially, I thought these were armed men guarding the um, honorable um, African American. But until event tank, that was when I got to know that things are actually not what I thought. And so what happened was that um, the information was that they were receiving um, um, an order from my birth. So I approached them and then I asked, where is this order coming from? And why and on, on what basis is my client being invited, but they were unable to tell me. Later, they made some calls to the commander, and they came back informing me that they're inviting her for the offense of fraud. Well, um, I, I told them to go, that I would bring my client myself, because I didn't want this kind of Rambo-style um, invitation. But then they, 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 they still declined. And so we have to even go back to the courtroom to alert the judge on what was going on, for the judge to issue further orders that my client was supposed to be invited without any escort from the armed police mob. So that was when we got to the police station. <clears throat> and then I inquired whether there was a complainant in this case. And the first thing is that there is no complainant in this case. Nobody has lodged any complaints. The police were only relying on a suspicious petition presented by somebody else that we even do not know, that my client had forged her, the signature on her nomination form. And mind you, this is a nomination form that has been vetted by the Electoral Commission 
And this is a nomination form that ended up in the hands of the parliamentary candidate of the NPP. You mean and Alex Nafanyo so, Markin, the majority leader? Yes, that is so. I see. So, so that, that's why you are in court. You are in court because the nomination forms of your client, the independent candidate, got into the hands of Alex and Afenio Markin. So Afenio Markin is, 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 is a party to this case, the injunction case in court? Afenio Markin initially was not a party to this case. The, the case was against the electoral commission. Okay. But we, we, we had him joined today. We moved the motion for a joinder to join him to the seat today, and that motion was granted. So now he's a party to this case. I see. And, and because we, we see him in the videos playing right now. And, and so you're saying that the, the arrest, attempted arrest of your, your client was upon the orders of somebody from above. You say orders from above. From who? Did you find out? Did you ask questions? What, what did the police say? That is the question we have been asking ourselves. And we have had no answers to those questions. Where is this order coming from? And for you to arrest um, an innocent soul, a lady, in fact, bringing about 15 to 20 armed policemen, just to arrest one single lady for an offense that, has, that she has no knowledge of, for just a suspicious alleged offense on the basis of a petition submitted by somebody else. And, and this petition, the, the, the heart of it is that your client is allowed to have forged signatures on the on the that's the the forms the nomination forms that the electoral commission has vetted and approved and put already published here on the notice of poll as a qualified candidate for the elections exactly and what the position actually um, entails is that the person is only saying that he suspects so there is no evidence to that effect. The person is only basing right. that petition on the basis of suspicion. I see. So what, what's next for you? You, you? you are the lawyer for her, so... Yes, so um, my client was detained and um, she was just released. In fact, um, another thing that happened was that the police this evening had to handcuff her, move her to her house, run back her home, in the name of a stitch, and they never got anything out of that. But at the end of the day, um, the most important thing is that we'll be able to secure um, a police inquiry bill for her, and um, we would take the necessary steps from tomorrow. Thank you for this update. And this is one that, uh, Jennifer, we will keep an eye on. So just keep us updated as well. Jennifer J is lawyer for well, Madame, well. Ma, ma, yes, Madame Louisa Boabeng, who is a, an independent candidate in the Efutu constituency in the 2024 December 7 parliamentary elections in that Efutu constituency. That's the constituency of Alexander Fenyo Markin. We understand that, uh, as has been narrated, her home has been searched and handcuffed at some point and, and was, in fact, as we speak now, she has been granted police inquiry bail. And this is one that we're keeping an eye on after the reports that she was earlier detained as well. So, look, there's a lot happening in there that we'll keep an eye on here on your election command center. But that leads us to constituency watch. We're still staying the steam in the effort to constituency. <music> Well, this Efutu constituency, because of the events that's happened now and, and the current or incumbent member of parliament, Alexander Fenyamakin, a strong figure in this eighth parliament, has led the NPP caucus as majority leader. You would think that this is a constituency that the, the, N, the, the NPP would, would obviously win, but there's a history that you want to take a look at. And we're going to go every step of the way, but stay with me closely. Going into this election, according to the Electoral Commission's data, 80,391 registered voters are in this Efutu constituency. That's the data we have. In, and we have about 155 polling stations in, going into this particular election in the Efutu constituency. Now, if you look at the trend analysis, here it is. In the parliamentary election, the NDC has won the Efutu constituency three times. 
with the same person. And this man who has won the photo constituency for the NDC in the year 1996, in the year 2000, 2004, he lost and then came back in 2008 and he won. I'm talking about Mike Hammer, the former Minister for Transport, the former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, the late John Evans Otamels appointed him as Transport Minister. Mike Hammer, we all know him. In 1996, Mike Hammer contested on a ticket of the NDC and won the photo constituency. And guess what? I'll tell you the individuals behind this photo constituency and why this is a constituency that really is, a, is one to watch going into the elections. In the year 2000, my Kama retained this constituency for the NDC, but in 2004, he lost it. He lost it to uh, Samuel Usweje of the MPP who contested that particular election. But there's one other thing as well to underscore um, in that particular 2004 election. Even though in the year 2000, Let's take a look at this. In the year 2000, even though the NDC won with Mike Hammer, the MPP won the parliamentary, that's the presidential, in the Ifoto constituency in the year 2000. So going into that election, John, John Ejokum Kufu won the presidential in the Ifoto constituency in the year 2000. When Jerry John Rollins did not contest, J.E. Mills came in for the first time, right? So there was a skirt and blouse situation there in that particular photo constituency in the year 2000. 2004, the NDC establishes hold again, you see there. And in 2008, they got it, as you see there. And then also, if you look at the various members of parliament who have held the seat of the photo constituency over the period, as I indicated, the NDC, you see there, won already three times, the MPP, one in 2012 with Alexander Afenio Markin, one 2016 Afenio Markin, 2020 Afenio Markin. And if you see the trend analysis, you see the NPP's votes actually rising right from the year 2012 when Alexander Afenio Markin showed up. He's actually increased the showing of the NPP in the Efutu constituency since the year 2012. In fact, in 2012, he defeated Mike Hammer, the incumbent MP. Then the MPP has started over the period since 2012, established their hold in their photo constituency, right for enough enough, Alexander Fenyomakin took over and defeated Mike Hammer in the year 2012. Now look at this. From 1996, Mike Hammer, Mike Hammer, Samuel Owusu-Jay, and then in 2012, Alexander Fenyomakin showed up. But in the year 1996, guess what? The people who contested is one that you should watch. Even though Mike Hammer won that election, on the ticket of the NDC. Guess who contested in the photo constituency for the MPP? Joseph Nunu Mensah, Brigadier Joseph Nunu Mensah retired. The former Chief of Defense Staff, former Minister for National Security or National Security Advisor, appointed by the late John Evans at Mills. The, that's Brigadier General Nunu Mensah retired. He contested for the MPP in the photo constituency. So you hear him say that he's never been a member of the NDC. There's some record to it. Yes, because at some point he was a member of the PNDC, defected, came to the MPP, some issues about a meeting with the late Jerry Rawlings came up, then the MPP took a decision to have him expelled and so on. So he has a record to it. But in the year 2012, there was also a skirt and blouse. Remember 2012, we went into that election with John Advanced Tamils dead, and so from the central region, also the NDC was enjoying some sympathy votes, so John Mahama won the presidential in the Efutu constituency. But for the parliamentary, Alexander Fenyomakin defeated the incumbent NDC MP. That's Mike Hammer there. So as you see it, even though John Mahama won the Efutu constituency, which is a slim margin, in fact, 18,219, as against Nana Kufado's 18,074. So just a little over 190 votes you see. For 2012, the parliamentary, you see Alexander Fenyomakin defeated Mike Hammer with over 3,000 votes difference as against the presidential that John Mahama won with less than 200 votes. Now, look at 20, 2016. Alexander Fenyomakin increased the showing of the MPP in the Efutu constituency. Eric Donata, a, for, a former staff here, contested for the NDC with, and got just about 34%. Now, now for you, Usu, who is the current national chairman of the Progressive People's Party, contested a photo constituency. He didn't have a good showing, as we see there. And then in 2020, 
We'll see James Kofianan coming up with, against Alexander Fenyomakin in the year 2020 elections. Fenyomakin had a good showing there as well. But let's look at the 2024 election. The notice of poll that was published by the Electoral Commission in that constituency. Okay, look at this. This is the independent candidate who was earlier today detained by the police, Boabin Louisa. It's on the third position in the notice of poll. And then you have James Kofianan again maintained by the NDC going into this election. Alessandra Fenyomarkin is in there for the MPP as well. It's a majority leader. So we will see how things will play out in this particular constituency with everything that's happening ahead of December 7 here on your election command center. The countdown is on and we are 17 days away from election day December 7. This is the countdown.